By the 1940s and 50s, American railroads began moving truck trailers by way of flat cars. This was known as Trailer on Flat Car, or TOFC, also referred to as piggyback service. One or two trailers would be loaded onto the flat car at a trackside ramp, transported to the next location, and then unloaded for direct transport by road to their final destination. In 1955, the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway was devising a more streamlined version of trailer transport. Known as Railvan, 28-foot aluminum truck trailers were given an integrated set of railroad wheels that could be pneumatically raised, or lowered, to elevate the road wheels above the rails. Trailers were hooked together using a pin connector. Once coupled to a freight or passenger train using an adapter, they would continue to their stopping point, uncouple from the train, raise up the railroad wheels, and in turn lower the road tires, and the trailer could reach its final stop by way of the roads. The benefit over conventional TOFC trains is avoiding the use of a flat car and less time spent transferring from road to rail. This concept actually dates back to 1899 on the Lakeshore Electric Railway of Ohio. Known as Bonner Rail Wagons, horses, and later trucks, would take road trailers to a loading ramp. The trailers would be loaded onto a special railroad car, and the Interurban Electric Railway would take them by rail. It was advertised to cut costs by 50% and cut down on the transfer time. Jumping back to the 1950s, the CNO developed two prototype rail vans in 1955, with two unique designs going to the UK in 1960. By November 1959, the CNO had three trailers and inaugurated rail van service on the rear of their streamlined Pierre Marquette passenger trains. Several more trailers would be built in the coming years. Running between Detroit and Grand Rapids with a connection to Traverse City, Michigan and Chicago, Illinois, these passenger trains often had a small number of rail vans attached to the rear, loaded with mail. Trucks would take the trailers from Grand Rapids to Muskegon. In 1961, the CNO renamed their trailers to Road Railer. In 1964, the CNO had 60 road railers, all built in their Grand Rapids shops. Not long after, though, in September 1967, the Post Office Department canceled its mail by rail contracts, leading to massive financial losses for the railroads and their passenger trains. Considering CNO's road railers only carried mail, this was the end of the line for their innovative experiment. Or was it? In 1976, the Bimodal Corporation was formed as a subsidiary of the North American Car Corporation. Bimodal's president was Robert S. Reby, former vice president for strategic planning, or marketing, at the New York Central Railroad. Bimodal was tasked with developing a new road-to-rail style system to replace piggyback service. The name Road Railer was trademarked, and a prototype rolled out in 1978. They functioned almost identical to CNO's road railers, a trailer with road and railroad wheels that could be raised and lowered with an air suspension system. The trailers would be connected in one long unit train. Reby's idea was a road railer train could eliminate the use of flat cars for trailers and reduce half the weight, resistance, and fuel consumption over a conventional piggyback train. Road railers were also estimated to be 25% cheaper. Cranes would not be required to remove trailers from flat cars, and establishing a road railer facility was much cheaper. Increased safety was another benefit. With less weight, road railer trains could stop in half the distance and be more stable on curves with a lower center of gravity. In 1982, Conrail started running the fast Empire State Express. Consisting of all road railers, trains ran between Buffalo, Rochester, and New York City during the evening and early morning hours. The service, though, was eventually canceled due to lack of business. Norfolk Southern began its iconic Triple Crown subsidiary road railer service in 1986. Other railroads like CSX, Southern Pacific, later Union Pacific, Canadian National, Canadian Pacific, Burlington Northern and Santa Fe, later BNSF, and Amtrak got into the road railer business throughout the 1980s and 90s. These new road railer trains would often carry auto parts and other goods. Road railer services often had priority over other freight trains too. Amtrak's road railers harkened back to the C&O style of coupling them to the rear of passenger trains, hauling mail and express freight. By this point, trailers had increased to 53 feet in length and now used a removable railroad wheel set between the trailers, as opposed to having an integrated wheel set. These trains also removed any slack action with their connectors, allowing the train to move as one piece. Road railer trains would see continued use throughout the 2000s and 2010s, but as of 2022, Norfolk Southern is the sole operator of road railer trains in the U.S. Trains 255 and 256 haul auto parts, operating between Detroit, Michigan and Kansas City, Missouri. 
Other railroads dropped their road railer service in favor of intermodal container shipping being more flexible and efficient in the long run. Road railer trailers require their own facility and maintenance and aren't exactly built like a standard 53-foot trailer. Plus, at this point, the road railers are starting to age. Despite that, road railer trains have come a long way from primitive origins in the 1800s to CNO's experiment in the 1950s and 60s leading to international versions, and the modern American iteration in the 1980s. How long Norfolk Southern will keep their sole road railer running is unknown, but it's worth catching if you have the chance. Road railers will remain as one of the most unique freight trains that one could ever see.